Joan Selkirk speaking. Can I help you? Oh, hi, Jessica. Well, how is your father? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Is he all right? Did he lose consciousness or, or hit his head at all? Okay, so he's all right. Um, I think it might be related to the hydromorphone that he's on. I'd like to speak with Dr. Rutsak and, and, and Gord, the physiotherapist. Can you bring your dad in tomorrow morning? Providing feedback is necessary, valuable, and with some planning and practice, it's not as difficult as you might think. Sometimes the best feedback occurs on a day-to-day -day basis as part of the workflow and as close to an event as possible. But if you'd prefer to arrange a meeting, choose a time and place that's convenient for both of you. A feedback session should feel informal and relaxed. But remember, one size does not fit all. An IEHP, for example, may come from a culture that perceives feedback differently. Why not open the conversation by asking your employee about what type of feedback they're accustomed to? Then describe the role feedback plays in your organization, its benefits to your employees, and go over the process involved. Amizi, do you have any time in the next little while? I'd like to set up a short feedback session with you. It's nothing formal, just part of what we do around here. Oh, uh, well, I should be done in about 15 minutes. Is that okay? It's perfect. I'll meet you in my office. Great. See you soon. Yep. Thanks. Hi, Amizi. Hi. Thanks for coming. A feedback session should have structure and compare the employee's performance to well-defined goals but it should also feel like a brainstorming session. Encourage your employee to take an active role. Ask open-ended questions that allow both of you to come to an agreement about the employee's overall performance. What aspects are successful and what needs improvement? Then both of you can develop an agenda for the feedback session collaboratively. Any important part of your employee's job performance can be discussed, but avoid making it personal. Unless they directly affect job performance, personality traits are not appropriate for feedback. Feedback always works best when it's asked for, rather than imposed. When it comes as a surprise, especially when it's negative, feedback can be met with a lot of emotion. The message gets lost. When providing feedback, avoid an emotional reaction by keeping your language descriptive yet impersonal using words such as the diagnosis instead of your diagnosis. Even when you give positive feedback, avoid making it personal and focus on the decision, not the decision maker. Deal with specifics, making use of real examples. When you do have to provide a subjective opinion, make it clear. Start your observation with an I statement. I felt or I saw. Try not to overwhelm your employee with too much information. Be concise and focus on behaviors that can be improved. And always verify that the message has been received. Invite questions or discussion and have the employee paraphrase what you've said. Hi, Missy. Hi. Thanks for coming. No problem. So, Amizi, mean, every now and again, I'll pull you aside for a short meeting like this, a feedback session. It just helps me see how you're doing and to guide you as you get used to working here. I do it for all my nurses. It's a bit like the orientation process you went through, but less formal. Have you ever had anything like this before, back home, for instance? Well, I used to get regular job evaluations. Is that what you mean? Well, not exactly. A job evaluation is really meant to assess your performance. Feedback is more if I notice you're doing something I think needs changing, and then I would just chat with you and go over how we do it differently here. It's also if you're doing something really well, I'll give you feedback on that because I want you to continue to do it well. So for instance, the way you were dealing with Mr. Chu yesterday, I noticed your soothing tone of voice, your touch, and just your slower pace really helped calm him down. Yeah, that's good. He was in quite a state when he came in yesterday. Yeah, so you did an excellent job with that. 
So now can you update me about Mr. Rose? I just brought a few notes with me. Oh yes, uh, Gord came to me yesterday with Mr. Rose and mm -hmm. said that he noticed he was feeling tired and dizzy, okay. more unsteady on his feet than he was last week. Uh, Dr. Rudzak had put him on a new medication. Yeah, Megan, yeah. I think she switched it to hydromorphone. Uh, yes, that's it. Uh, so I did an assessment of Mr. Rose, as you see there, mm -hmm. and he seemed fine, although his blood pressure was a little low. Uh, he also said he was fighting a bug and just didn't feel well. Yes, I can see that everything's been entered clearly in this chart, but in a case like this, our procedure is to notify the doctor and to follow up with the physiotherapist. Oh, I, I see. I didn't do that. I'm so sorry, Joan. Uh, I know you had mentioned that in your orientation. It's okay. This is all just a learning process. But what happened in this case is I did get a phone call from his daughter, Jessica, and Mr. Rose had a fall yesterday. So Jessica was upset, and she had mentioned that you had assessed her father uh, and just wondered what we thought she should do next. Uh, yes, I, I walked Mr. Rose to his daughter's car and let her know what Gord had noticed. I'm so sorry he had a fall. He's okay, but what we usually do in a case like this is have Megan see him while he's here, especially because he had that change in the medication, and then follow up with Gord. I see. I'm so sorry about this, John. I feel badly. I mean, see, this is a normal part of the learning process. What's important here is we learn from it, we make our adjustments, and we move forward. Okay. Uh, but in this case, I, I didn't feel like I needed to bother Dr. Er, Megan. I wouldn't worry about that. Megan is used to our practice. In fact, she helped develop our best practices. So don't worry about that. But can I ask you another question? Of course. Now, this is just a personal observation, so please tell me if I'm wrong. But do you feel comfortable dealing with Megan? The reason I ask is, for example, yesterday, I noticed when she came into the lunchroom and started chatting with you, I felt you seemed a bit shy with her. Am I totally off on this? No. Um, it is a little strange with Megan. Uh, you see, where I'm from, a doctor is not someone a nurse chats with in the lunchroom. Mm -hmm. It's very separate. Do you know what I mean? And Megan is a doctor, so I... Okay, I think I'm getting, beginning to understand. It sort of, it makes sense. In fact, it reminds me of the way things used to be here many years ago. But now, each member of the team is regarded as a professional, and we all have an important role to play in the patient's care. So it's different. We all collaborate, and so you have no need to feel shy. Okay, and with Gord, I need to feel comfortable approaching both of them. Absolutely. In fact, it's part of our policy, so you can feel confident doing that. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you for explaining these things to me, Joan. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you, Amizi, and thank you for listening. Uh, may I ask you one more thing, Joan? Uh, what would you like me to do next? Uh, should I speak with Megan and Gord? Well, I've done that already, so you don't need to do that. But could you follow up with Mr. Rose's daughter, Jessica? Um, Megan would like to see Mr. Rose first thing in the morning, and she suggested a lower dose of the medication for tonight. Here's the information. And Gord would like to find out his living situation. Does he live in a two-story? Is he in a bungalow? And he really wants to find out how much family support he has. So if you could get started on that, I'd really appreciate it. No problem. Okay, and I put Mr. Rose first on the agenda for the morning. Can you let Jessica know that? Uh, yes, uh, so I'll arrange a morning appointment for mm -hmm. Mr. Rose, and I'll let Jessica know to lower his dosage tonight. I'll also find out about Mr. Rose's living situation and his family support. And I'll let Jessica know that we will be discussing Mr. Rose's case before his appointment tomorrow morning. Excellent. Yeah. I'll also apologize for the confusion and explain what happened. I think that's a good idea. And I just want to say, too, that I'm really happy with the quality of the work you're doing here. When I hired you, I made a good decision. Thank you, Joan. Uh, this was very helpful. But would you mind listening to what I will say to explain? Oh, sure, of course. I'd love to. Great. Uh, so I'll probably...